Shalom, family. Shalom. Good to see you all. Glad you are here. I have an update on the Ohio man that Benjamin Eugene Dagley, he was arrested. So he did make it all the way out of Mississippi. So I guess that's why when the Mississippi police were looking for him, they couldn't find him. And I bet you he left right after that incident. He didn't stay in Mississippi. He drove all the way there. And I think he had that little incident and he drove all the way back. That's just my opinion. I don't think he's stuck around Mississippi. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, please give me a one if you can see the screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you, family. All right, all right, so here he is. All right, so the Ohio man arrested days after confronting NBC News Shaquille Brewster on live TV, officials say. So the Ohio man who angrily confronted NBC News Shaquille Brewster on live TV was arrested in Dayton on Thursday, authorities said. Benjamin Eugene Dagley, 54, was picked up at a shopping plaza in the Southwest Ohio city and the U S Marshal Pete Elliott said this in a statement. Now, remember he violated his parole by crossing state lines and he never got permission to do that. So usually when you violate your parole, you get thrown right up in the slammer. So, uh, Dagley was wanted in Gulfport, uh, Mississippi, where he'll be charged in two counts of assault, one count of disturbance of the peace, and one count of violating an emergency curfew, officials said. This violent fugitive was attempting to flee from his charges in Gulfport. I told y'all he left right after he did that. He knew he was wrong. Yeah, so... He fled back to Ohio after that incident. I think he knew they were looking for him. So he left, but swift work of our task force members resulted in a timely arrest, Elliot said. The task force members received information from Dagley uh, still driving in a white truck bearing the Ohio's license plate. The statement said task force members located the truck in the parking lot and subsequently arrested him after watching him exit a store in the shopping plaza. So he went shopping. <laughs> he went back to Ohio and went to a shopping plaza and went shopping. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, the more you're out in public, the more likely you will be caught. I mean, that's especially if you're on parole. Brewster was doing a live NBC uh, a shot from Gulfport, and that was after Hurricane Ida had went through there. And the man, and we saw him pull up in a white pickup truck and sprint it towards him. The man got in Brewster's face and they said at one point he even shoved him. All right, so uh, Brewster calmly ended, uh, ended the report. The man could be heard shouting to Brewster, report accurately. You don't even know how he was reported. You jumped out of a vehicle running towards him. You weren't even there when he started the broadcast. So how do you know whether it's accurate or not? You just saw a black man and took advantage of that opportunity to try to start something. That's all it is. They're, they're trained to do this. I'm telling y'all. Okay. It wasn't immediately clear if Dagley 
who was booked into Montgomery County Jail, had been assigned an attorney or when his first court appearance would be. Dagley could also be charged with a probation violation for traveling outside Ohio without permission, Gulfport police said. And that's exactly right. You know, I knew people that were on parole and that was, in fact, that was one of the things they told me. I went to high school with a guy that I was friends with back then, and he was on parole. Um, you know, his situation was he was hungry and he was without a job and he went and he robbed uh, a supermarket. <laughs> That's what he did because he was hungry. So, but he still landed in jail and he got out on parole. And I remember we were talking and that was one of the things he told me. He said, uh, you know, he can't even leave the state unless he gets permission first. So, but you know, there's a lot out here like Dagley. They will do this anyway. Or we heard of people slipping out of ankle monitors and just going out, you know, with their friends or just being out in general without the ankle monitor. So these things do happen. Okay, court documents show Dagley pled guilty to vandalism, inducing panic, attempted assault, stemming from a 2017 commercial break-in. So he broke into a business. He was sentenced to five years probation. And see, look, there are some people that just belong behind bars, and this dude is definitely it. You know, I, I, I'm just taking notice to many like him that commit felonies, and they are walking around among everybody else. I mean, look at the dude I did yesterday, the one that raped a minor, and he was able to bond out. And, and, you know, it, this seems to be a pattern. Okay, so he got five years probation for committing a felony, breaking in a business and uh, attempted assault and all that, and 30 days in jail to go along with a $5,000 fine and $10,000 restitution to Cleveland Plating. The Ohio attorney who represented Dagley in that case could not be immediately reached for comment Thursday. So look like he got arrested in Ohio. Didn't say whether he was still in jail. You know, you know how these folks are. They don't give you that part because technically he's probably still free. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. In this place, I wouldn't doubt it. But the fact that he did what he did tells you he's a danger to the public. He really shouldn't be free at all. Just like the other dude that threw the rocks at uh, that black teen. He shouldn't be free either. But it's amazing how they can commit the worst crime, the absolute worst crime, and be able to bond out. Thank you, Willie Combs, for the super sticker. Thank you. I'm sorry if I don't say anything. Um, thank you, James Richardson, for the super sticker. When I'm on full screen, I really can't see y'all at that point in time. <laughs> so if I don't say anything, it's not that I don't appreciate um, the super chats and super stickers. Please don't get offended if, you know, a few of you may slip under the radar it's not intentional at all. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is unbelievable. And it's always these guys, they tread lightly on and they don't even deserve it. But they want to justify to us why it's okay to kill an unarmed black man. <laughs> they want, they, that that's justifiable. But when you got a real violent person out here running around, violating parole, assaulting people, you know, you, notice you don't hear anything from these same people that are always in agreements to a black man getting shot. 
they have nothing to say when these incidents happen. Nothing to say. No. And, you know, chances are he may not even have an attorney. That attorney was for his um, other felony, not for what he did in Mississippi. So technically, until he hires somebody, he can hire the same attorney. But technically, he doesn't have an attorney hired, you know, so far, you know, for violating his parole. And you know how it is with um, brothers and sisters. If you're on parole and you violate it, they put you back in immediately. I mean, it is it's swift. They put you back there as swiftly as possible. And we all remember what they did to that black woman that was just trying to take a class so that she can get employment. She was in a class and because she didn't answer when they felt she should have, they tried to put her back in jail. But since then, they got the whole thing straightened out. She got to go back home. You know, I was glad about that. She definitely did not deserve that when you're just trying to better yourself. Why would you put someone in jail for that? But this old silly ass place, that's the way they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard about Mark Lamont Hill recently coming out and saying that he did not think Dylan Roof deserved the death penalty. Oh, I'm going to drag his ass. <laughs> I got the article. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dragging his ass on that one. Unbelievable. I am so sick of him. I do not. Let me tell y'all something. I have not felt Mark Lamont Hill in years. You know, when he first, when I first saw him come on the scene, I kind of listened. And then over time, I just couldn't deal with listening to him anymore. You know, it is ridiculous what this dude is doing. And personally, y'all, I think he's doing it for attention. I really do. I mean, why would you even come out and say something that controversial unless you're looking for attention? That's all. That's what I think it is. You may think it's something else. I, I just think he's being an attention whore because making that kind of statement is going to bring a reaction. It is. So I, I'm going to be doing that video tonight. It'll be coming out tomorrow. You know, it, it, I wish some of these people would just be quiet. I really do. You know, it's amazing how Mark Lamont Hill have compassion for everybody but the black community. Do y'all remember when he went to that Israel-Palestinian uh, Palestinian summit and he sat there to defend the Palestinians at a time when black men were getting gunned down all over this country in the streets unarmed? He didn't say one word about that. And remember when he drag Dr. Frances Cress Welsing right after she died. He went public and dragged her on TV. That was so disrespectful. It wasn't even funny. A woman wasn't even dead an hour and he was out there dragging her. I mean, it was just, and, and then remember his stance against Bill Cosby you know, so he's he's said and done controversial things that I, I just don't care for this dude. I would not be upset if we don't ever see him again on TV, but I know that's not going to happen. As long as he's saying stupid stuff like that, they'll keep him around. You know, they will keep him around. Yeah, I, I remember that interview he did with Candace Owens. I, I do remember that. Um, the pioneer, I do remember that. Yeah, he is a bum. You got that right, T. Austin. 
Mm -hmm. So y'all, I'm going to um, go ahead and end this live stream. Um, Tanya T, we were talking about Mark Lamont Hill. That's who we were talking about. I guess you came in late. Mm -hmm. So everybody, please enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe because I heard um, Hurricane Larry is actually coming up the East Coast. So stay safe wherever you are. <laughs> and you know, in many cases, the, the stronger hurricanes come late in the season. You know, the ones that do the most damage usually will come you know, late in, in the season, because even here, Hurricane Sandy happened in October. So it is not unusual for the activity to step up and the hurricanes to be more dangerous. So wherever you are, yes, Hurricane Larry. So stay safe and we'll definitely be coming together to do this again. And by the way, I am planning to do a um, another current event. And I'm eyeing next weekend to see if I can get the gang together and we come online and just go over some of the recent current events. We haven't done that in a while. All right, everybody. Shalom, family.